Welcome one and all. I'm Mark Passio of WhatOnEarthIsHappening.com. It's good to be a part of Anarchapoco 2023 this year. Thank you to the event organizers for inviting me to speak. My presentation here today is entitled Anarchy and the Occult Part 3, The Only Solution to Slavery. And uh, this one is going to be a hard-hitting one. And for those who are not familiar with my work, I would actually suggest that you not start with this one, that you actually go through my material in order uh, at your own pace from episode number one of my podcast, which I always tell people because my information is cumulative knowledge. For those who have not experienced that, I'm going to try to keep this presentation as self-contained as possible. But again, uh, I will be addressing some subjects and topics that may be incendiary and uh, cause some hurt feelings even, and that's okay, because uh, what I'm ultimately here to do is tell the truth. Uh, even if that truth is harsh, unpleasant to hear, uh, and that perhaps some people's egos are getting in the way of the reception of it, so be it, it's going to be said anyway. So let's jump in to the usual caveats that I give any of my viewing or listening audiences before I even start a presentation. Uh, and this is at the risk of uh, even turning people off at the very beginning. But uh, there are things that have to be said uh, so that people understand where I'm coming from. You're not going to be seeing or hearing anything new here today in this presentation. This is not... These are not new cosmic revelations. These are things that have actually always been the case. The truth remains the truth. That's what the phrase, there's nothing new under the sun, means. It, it means I'm not going to come out with any brand new marvels of, of revelatory marvels of the universe here. However, it is material that isn't common sense knowledge. And it is stuff that many people have overlooked and that they don't understand, quite unfortunately. Um, but all I can basically do is take the truth that already exists, understand it, and then represent it to other people in uh, a personalized framework with my own aesthetics applied to that framework, which is what this presentation is. And that's all really anybody can do. There is nothing new. It's the same slavery that's been going on since humanity has existed. That's the human condition, folks. And this is what people have to really understand and start calling it out in the open, which we'll talk about. The second caveat that I give, well, uh, regarding that there is nothing new, uh, I went over uh, the first two sections of material that are sort of prerequisite knowledge for this one in Anarchy in the Occult Part 1 and Anarchy in the Occult Part 2. I delivered these um, in back-to-back -back years uh, in person at Anarchapoco in 2018 and 19. So if you haven't seen those, those are good frameworks to begin with. Although, again, I would say that nothing uh, is a substitute for going through all of my podcasts and videos in order. However, if you want to have the short version of what we're going to be adding an addendum onto here and presenting the solution to the problem here, again, many people accuse me of never talking about solutions. I tell people my entire material is the solution. If you understand my material, you're going to get to the heart of the solution. The problem is most people don't understand it and or are willfully ignorant of it. Uh, and simply will not make the effort to take it in and go through it. Uh, I find that the anarchist community in general has a small amount of very receptive people, but the bulk of the community of anarchists um, are stuck. They're stuck in a rigid mindset, and that's not helping their cause, and we're going to talk about that here today. So again, there's nothing new that I'm going to present here. However, what I am going to present, I'm going to talk about in no uncertain terms because um, I've researched the truth of the matter regarding what I'm going to present today, and it is not my personal opinions. So I'm going to speak on it as what I 
consider it and what I would say, I know it to be. This is the truth of the matter regarding the solution to the problem of human slavery. And I'm not going to present it to people in a way that is like baby spoon feeding a child strained peas. I'm going to say it like I'm saying it to other mature psychological adults, whether they are ready to receive it or not. So this presentation isn't for psychological children. If you're, you're worried about your feelings of getting hurt, you probably want to go someplace else. Um, this is for people who are ready to hear factual information, who are ready to hear uncomfortable truths. It is not for those who appear to be adults bodily, but yet they're not really psychological adults. They still have the mentation of a child and they try to think and reason with their emotions. And the first time they hear something that isn't completely in line with what they already think, they react emotionally and get all offended and upset. Well, if that's you, that's fine. Be that way um, and get as upset as you want, get as offended as you like. Because the truth remains the truth, regardless of how you feel about it. The truth doesn't really care how any of us feel about it. Uh, you know, it didn't care how I felt about it. I was once resistant to information like this. Uh, I, again, I came from a very, very dark world in, in my past, uh, in my youth. Uh, I talk about this in no uncertain terms in all of my work, that my background came from, uh, I was involved in dark occultism. Uh, working around and with some of the people that are actually making the, the true decisions about how our world is run until I had a crisis of conscience and, you know, left that domain of human existence. And then ever since have been attempting to blow the whistle on it to the reception of some people, but certainly not enough. So, you know, Again, my presentation style is very intense sometimes, very combative at times. I'm not going to sugarcoat my words. If you don't like to hear it, tough. I'm going to say it anyway. That's why I'm going to try to sort of out extreme any of the other presenters. Uh, usually I'm going to be the most extreme presenter because I have no uh, qualms about saying something that is uncomfortable to somebody. And there's a reason I do that. So, you know, if you get upset by what you hear today, that's fine. So be it. That will never make what I'm going to say today untrue. You could be as offended about it as you like. It's still the truth. The truth by its very nature is belligerent to the lie. It's belligerent to mind control. It's belligerent to every form of deception. And that's what I'm trying to obliterate because that's the foundational basis for human slavery is people refusing to believe what's true and people uh, continuing and insisting on believing a lie. So telling the truth and making someone understand that truth, even though it doesn't make them very happy, is far better than telling them a comfortable lie that they'll be happy about hearing, but it's not really true. It's not going to help them progress spiritually. It's not going to help them to progress to the real solution. So why do I do this type of work? I don't do it to be liked. My personality could come off as very abrasive to some people. And again, I, that's not why I'm here. It's not why I do this. I'm not here to make friends. I'm not here to be liked. I'm not here to be popular. I'm not here to be the cool kid. I'm here to tell you the harsh truth of the fact of the matter of the reality that you're embedded in and how to change it. If you don't want to hear that, it's your funeral. And unfortunately, it's everybody's funeral because... I consider the people who attend a conference like this, your cut, cutting edge, your, your tip of the spear, your front lines. And unfortunately, I don't think many of you really have heard or really do truly understand what I've been saying over the last 16 years. There are some who do very much get it, but they're definitely in the minority. And I'm going to speak to that dynamic in a way that's not going to be too comfortable. Main reason I do what I do is because I have a deep moral obligation to speak this truth regarding what I know in order to help other people to understand it and then take action based upon this information so that we can do something about the human condition of slavery so that we can end it. And I do it simply because it's the right thing. That's it. That's my motivation. That's the only motivation I need. Is it the correct thing to do? Is it the morally right thing? Is it the morally responsible thing? Then do it. And it doesn't matter what anybody thinks of it because 
What is right, what is true, what is correct remains that against the whole world. It doesn't matter if everybody is against it. It's still the truth. It's still what is right. And that's the attitude I come at all my work from, from that perspective. Truth is the truth, regardless of anybody wants to hear it or not. And I'm going to speak it. So this presentation is also about the occult, hence the name anarchy and the occult. So let's just review very briefly what the occult is. Th this here image on the right is what I would say depicts what all of occult information is. It's cosmic information. It is the, the ultimate knowledge of creation and the knowledge of cosmic law within creation. And many people would take the Hollywood definition, the Hollywoodized definition, all oh, the occult. These are black robed figures running out in the clearing in the woods, sacrificing animals. This is not what the occult really truly is. Not to say that there can't be aspects of it that deal with nonsense like that, but uh, occult information is deep psychology. It's deep human psychology. It's deep hidden understanding of hidden laws of the universe that are hidden from people for very specific reasons to control them, to control them in their ignorance. The word occult is derived from the Latin adjective occultus, meaning hidden. That is all the word occult means. It means hidden. Occultism is the study of the hidden laws of nature, specifically those laws which are at work in the invisible slash mental slash spiritual domain far more than those that are at work in the visible slash physical world. Therefore, occultism involves the acceptance of a much wider worldview than that which is ordinarily taken by the everyday person. Occultists, then, may be defined as those who study all the laws of nature, not just the seen laws of nature, both that which are readily seen and those which are much more difficult to see with the physical eyes or with physical measuring instrumentation alone. This is something that has to be perceived with the mind's eye. This is something has, that has to be perceived through holistic intelligence, not just left-brained intellect. And that's where the problem usually comes in in the anarchist community because you have not... I'm not going to paint with the, uh, the broadest brush and say that it's all people within the anarchist community, but there's a large percentage of them that are more purely secular humanists and do not have a very deep spiritual foundation and look at things from very often an even atheistic perspective. And they're going to find this the most challenging to understand because they've really limit, li limited themselves from the from Jump Street. They've limited themselves right out of the gates. Um, because the people who are really running the show do understand how these hidden cosmic laws work. And they understand that the occult is simply nothing more than hidden science. That's what the occult world actually is. It's science that you don't know about yet. It's science that you're not privy to because the masters of our reality didn't want you to be privy to it. And what I'm doing and have been doing for the last 16 years is exploding that hidden science out into the world freely at the risk of, you know, getting on the bad side of my former colleagues and people who are in the big cult that's really running the show. And I've been attempting to tell people who say they want freedom how to really go about procuring it and obtaining it. And that's the problem is many of them are themselves psychologically, spiritually, morally resistant to the true understanding of this science, which could liberate them. And instead they prefer to remain willfully ignorant. And that puts them in a position where they can never be liberated. Because as we're going to talk about, there's only one solution. As incendiary and as angering as that may be for people to hear, there's only one solution and most human beings don't know what it is. And we'll get to that. So let's jump into the first section called the goal and why we're not there yet. This section is the goal of what anarchy really is. 
the goal of what we say we want to brought, be brought into manifestation and to fruition in human uh, everyday life. And why are we not there yet? What's going to be involved in getting there? Because if you don't know the path to get there, you can never enact the solution. You have to understand your coordinates for direction. And that's unfortunately what many people in the anarchist community still lack the knowledge of, sadly. And I'm going to try to take corrective measures to improve that condition. But again, it's going to be about getting your ego out of the way. And that's where people have a problem. Their ego's in the way. They can hear the answer and their ego will reject it because it's not what they already have in their mind. See, we're, we're locked as a species, largely, we're locked into patterns of the, the neural firing of the brain, the synapses. When they fire a certain way, they wire a certain way. And we're, we get trapped into those ways of thinking. And we can't, then we become our wor own worst enemy, where our own thinking is actually holding back our own goal. So we have to define the goal. And we have to be accurate in our wording about defining the goal. And I think this is a very simple statement. It's very true. It's elegant in its simplicity. True freedom is the overarching stated goal of the anarchist community as a whole. I think we could all agree upon that. We recognize we're not truly free and we want true freedom. So now we have to define the goal. What is true freedom? If true freedom is the goal, what does that mean? So let's give a simple working definition of what real freedom is. The most accurate definition of true freedom is the ability to exercise one's natural rights without the inhibition of violence, duress, and or coercive restraint initiated by others. Let me repeat that simple working definition of true freedom. This is what real freedom is. It doesn't mean I can do anything that I want. It doesn't mean I can go out and rape, pillage, and murder endlessly with no consequence just because I feel like it. It is not do whatever you feel like doing. True freedom means that you can behave within the confines of natural law, within your natural rights. You don't have the right to initiate harm against other people. That's the non-aggression principle. And you should be able to live your life without the initiation of harm placed upon you by others. They should also be respecting the non-aggression principle. We, of course, as a community, have made the recognition that is not the human condition. We are, unfortunately, under the inhibition of violence, duress, and coercive restraint initiated by others against us for simply exercising natural rights that we do have and that we wish to exercise freely. That is the definition of freedom. The human condition is that we do not have that, meaning we are enslaved. The human condition is slavery. That's the fact of the matter. And the anarchist community needs to start using that word at the risk of quote unquote offending other people. There's many different forms of slavery. Yes, there is co overt chain and shackle slavery, which many people in human history have had the horrific misfortune of having had to live under. And that's, it's a tragic horror that should never have existed. But there are other forms of slavery. There is mental slavery. There is even spiritual slavery. There is the slavery of the mind. There is covert slavery of the body. There is people making claims of ownership upon the fruit of our labor, which is euphemized as taxation. Covert slavery is even more dangerous than chain and shackle slavery. More dangerous because people can't see it in the mind's eye. They, they see the results of what covert slavery is, and they think it's not slavery. That's infinitely more insidious and dangerous than even physical chain and shackle slavery, than chattel slavery. Because if you have a population of beings convinced that they're not slaves when they are, they will never rebel against that condition. And so if we correctly state that the goal of the anarchist community is to attain that condition of true freedom by which we can exercise our natural rights free from the violence imposed upon us by other beings when we attempt to do so, we are basically saying 
that we don't want to be enslaved and that the real goal is to end the current human condition of slavery on this planet because that is what it is. The goal is to end human slavery and that has to start by ending the understanding of what slavery is in the mind. You, you, we have to end the condition of supporting slavery. We have to know what it is up here. And then we have to turn the switch to say, I will never support or condone that. And that's the hardest work there is to do by my own admission. This is what I've been spending the last 16 years trying to do with unfortunately little real world change in the aggregate of humanity. There are small subsets of people who have been learning it very well and have really changed their lives for the better and are helping other people to change theirs. But if we look at it in the aggregate, in the collective sense, we are not very close to achieving the goal of ending slavery on this planet in the human population because government is slavery and the goal of the anarchist community, if we're going to live truly free, the idea of government cannot be supported. It cannot be condoned. And at some point it must be ended to end slavery. And I want to just say, I completely share that goal with the anarchist community. I share the goal of true freedom. I share the goal of ending slavery. So I really, really, really want to champion the anarchist movement. However, but, and here's where feelings are going to get hurt. And that's okay because I have to be honest about my assessment of the situation and what I see. I cannot open up with a lie. I cannot tell you that I see radical progressive change in the right direction. Unfortunately, this is where I'm gauging the dynamic in the anarchist community right here. This is it. So there he goes. This is the anarchist community, unfortunately, and it's a new what on earth is happening mascot, okay? To interject a little dark humor into the situation, this is Chumpy. This is Chumpy the hamster, okay? Say hi to Chumpy. He's nice and cute. He's got big fat cheeks. He's running around on that wheel, and he thinks he may be going someplace, but he's chumped, as they say on the street. Chumpy the hamster is chumped. And he's running on that wheel thinking he's going someplace and he ain't going nowhere. That's where Chumpy's going. So take a good look at it. Get as offended as you like. At the risk of losing people, it doesn't matter to me because what I'm still saying is true. And I'm giving you my honest assessment of where the anarchist community is as a whole. Call it a consciousness checkpoint, if you will. But this is where the anarchist community is at. I'd love to champion this movement, but this is the so-called movement. Put place movement in, in a healthy dose of double quotes when you use it to describe anarchism moving forward in the world because there isn't any movement. There's a tiny paltry sliver of helping people to get what the real solution is out there in the anarchist community. The effort is absolutely not good enough. And hardly anybody will come on, will go on record and say this to the community. They won't do it because they're more about being liked, making friends, making donations. I don't care if you like me. I don't care if you hate me. I don't care if you donate or you don't donate. I don't, it, that, those things are meaningless to me. I'm a purveyor of the truth. That's it. That's all I'm here to do. So I'm going to tell you the uncomfortable truth that anarchists are no closer to achieving their stated goal of true freedom and ending coercive restraint upon our freedoms than they ever have been. You're losing. You're losing because you're chumped because you're still willfully ignorant of the solution that is being actually has been actually being given to you for the past greater part of the past two decades for about 16 years. Okay. And other people have also been doing that work who may not have their work may not even have gotten as much traction as mine has over the last decade or so. But what I'm trying to say is 
there, the anarchist community is losing for a very good reason. It's not an unfounded, you know, nonsensical reason that this community is not achieving its goals. It's losing for very logical reasons. And if you want to keep losing, then that makes you something, right? If we're going to be defined truly by, by our actions, right? And you're just losing over and over again, that's going to make you a loser. And I don't want this community to be losers. I don't want this. I want this community to win. I want it to be winners. I want us to defeat the real enemies out there. I want us to defeat ignorance, which is the ultimate enemy. But we have to have the answers correct first. And that's the problem. Many of this community are remaining willfully ignorant of the true answers and the true solution. And that has to be corrected. And to correct it, we have to know why. Why are we in this situation? What is the information we're lacking? What are, are the psychological factors that are preventing people from listening? They can't quiet the mind. They can't be quiet long enough. They can't shut up and just hear the wisdom pour into their mind if they get the chatter out of the brain. If they get off the hamster wheel of the endless chatter of the mind, they'll be able to hear the solution and then implement it effectively. So let's see if we can get people to that today or even in the next year or two years or five years. See, for there to be a movement, there's got to be progress. That's what the definition of movement means. It means progress through motion. We're, we're, we don't really have that in this community, sadly. So let's look at why we don't have it. There's a whole lot of people in the anarchist community, movement, whatever you want to call it, that are really good at hearing their own voice. They put out a lot of words. But when it comes to actually taking real world action through the will to first change themselves and then to help influence change in others in the wider community, it's crickets, it's goose egg, it's a big nothing burger. So there's a universe of difference. There's a chasm between saying that you want something to be manifest in the world versus utilizing your will to bring that situation into physical manifested fruition in life. You can say tons of things that you want. You could say you want to be healthy. You want to be content. You want to be happy. You want to be rich, etc. You could do a, You could say a million things that you want. And what the anarchist community is generally in the overarching sense saying is I want to be free and I want everybody else to be free. And that's a great goal. That's the ultimate goal. That's what we should be here to do. When it comes to what your will has been to enact that and make it happen, it's been tragically awful, tragically awful. And it pains me to just have to say it that way, but I have to, I'm fulfilling my moral obligation to speak the truth. Even if it makes me unpopular, then so be it. But the dichotomy, the chasm between your words and your will is bigger than the grand Canyon. I mean, it's, it's bigger than the space between galaxies folks. And that bridge has to be conquered. To, to bring one's thought, emotion, and action into full unison, into full congruity. See, that's what the problem is. We don't have congruity between our thoughts, emotions, and actions. We say one thing, but then our actions ultimately betray what we just said we wanted. Most people in the so-called anarchist movement say that they want true freedom. But few understand that there are requirements necessary to bringing that condition of true freedom into real world manifestation. We just say what we want blindly, but we don't understand what are the requirements for making that happen. If you want to make a certain kind of dessert, there are going to be requirements called a recipe where you have to gather ingredients and then you have to put the ingredients together in a successive order for it to manifest as the dessert that you want to eat and enjoy. Freedom is no different than that. There is a recipe for it. You have to understand certain things. 
And if you don't understand them, you can never achieve it. Meaning, if you don't understand the recipe's ingredients and the steps to put the recipe together, you're never going to manifest that dessert. This is simple logic. This is simple common sense logic, or at least it should be. Most members of the anarchist movement, unfortunately, still lack the holistic intelligence required, the true deep-seated care that is required, that is emotional intelligence. And most of all, they lack the willpower to truly enact and fulfill those requirements for real freedom. And until we build those things up, and they are one, they are totally congruent with each other. One's intelligence, your thoughts, your care, your emotions, and your willpower, your actions are congruent with each other toward the real stated goal. That's how we're going to fulfill the requirements and make the manifested condition happen. This is the real law of attraction, not the total bullshit new age law of attraction that's peddled out there by the new age movement which is another movement going nowhere because they're locked into rigid beliefs that aren't true. Very similar to the anarchist community. We have to learn the real laws of manifestation. And that's what I'm going to explain to you here, which I have been explaining and will continue to explain. These are the top requirements for solving the problem of human slavery. Listen up. Listen well. This is the real alchemical process. This is the true great work. The first thing you need is you have to diagnose the problem. No problem can be solved until its true nature is understood. Where is the imbalance coming from? What is the true nature of the, of the issue that we're experiencing? So we need a deep and accurate understanding of the nature of the problem, number one. Number two, we need a deep and accurate understanding of who the real enemy is because there is an enemy. And like I said, ignorance is the ultimate enemy, but we have to look at the groups of people that are actually standing in the way and what we can do about their mentation that is actually creating the opposite. Some in a conscious way, some in a completely unconscious way, but it's creating the opposite manifestation of what we say we want our goal to be, which is true freedom. And third, we need a deep and accurate understanding of the only solution, non knowing that the solution is singular. It's not plural. It's not doing many, 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 many different things. It's doing one thing and doing it to a high level so that we can reach other people's minds and then improve the human condition. And it's about understanding how to do that work. It's not just understanding what that work is to do. It's understanding the methodology of how to go about doing it to bring the condition that we say we want into real world manifestation. So let's look at these three things in order. These are part of the solution there. You could say that these are the foundation of the solution. You have to get these right before you work toward the solution. If you don't have these things right, you shouldn't jump to the solution, to trying to enact any solution, because you don't have the knowledge first. You need to gather your knowledge first in anything, in any endeavor that, that is complex and that requires information. The information gathering has to come first. Then you process that information and you come to a logical understanding of what it means. Then you act upon it. That's the trivium process steps in the correct order, which we're going to talk about later in the presentation. But if you don't have foundational knowledge gathered first, any steps that you take in action are going to be way off kilter. They're going to be way toward an imbalanced extreme that is never going to manifest what you say you want. And I'm here to tell the anarchist community today, I'm sorry. It's sad that it's going this way. But I have to be honest with you and tell you, you don't have the proper foundational knowledge and you're not doing the correct things that can lead to a solution. You're starting with incomplete grammar and then you're jumping right to the rhetoric stage of the trivium. You're starting with incomplete knowledge and you're trying to jump right to, real, to, to worldly action. And that's the problem. You don't jump 
to worldly action unless you have these factors figured out first. What is the true nature of the problem? What are the underlying causal factors in the realm of causation? The realm of effects we can explore all day long. We could pick apart all of the machinations that are happening in, the, in our world. We could look at all the self-inflicted wounds. You know, you could go on and on with the three... 3D worldly effects, but those aren't the causal factors. You have to get to the realm of causality, the, where the underlying reasons, the why is at before you can actually treat the symptoms. We're not here to just endlessly treat symptoms. We're here to solve the problem from the causal level. If you don't understand that, you need to understand the difference between the causal realm and the realm of effects. Go back into my former work, Anarchy in the Occult, where I explain that. So let's jump in. Understanding the nature of the problem. I call this getting to the heart of the problem. The fundamental nature of the problem of human slavery is that most human beings do not have a full and accurate understanding of true objective morality and natural law. That's the nature of the problem. Ignorance. Ignorance of what? T the two most important things that one must hold knowledge of, which is actually held close to them by the dark occult. They don't want th this information truly getting out. That's why they've conquered and perverted religions. They've conquered and perverted any fraternal lodge systems, etc. They don't want true morality getting out the understanding of true, accurate, objective morality getting out to the public because that's what can level the playing field and end their control. As simple, as even oversimplified as that sounds, that's the correct answer. This is the nature of the problem. The bulk of the human species does not understand morality and natural law. If that is corrected, we will be able to manifest true freedom. If that continues to remain the case that humanity remains the overwhelming bulk of human beings remain ignorant of objective morality and natural law, true freedom cannot ever manifest. Can not. Not only will it not, it is not possible to manifest that condition by cosmic law. So the ignorance of objective morality and natural law leads human beings to erroneously believe that human beings behaviors that are based in the concept of authority are morally legitimate and acceptable. Listen to what I said again. Ignorance of objective morality makes people believe in their own mind that behaviors that are based in authority are perfectly morally acceptable. Is that not the case? Is, th is this not the, the very simple logical fact of the matter? People worldwide in the bulk of human civilization, still today in 2023, don't know what the simple difference between right behavior and wrong behavior is, folks. That's the fundamental nature of the problem. People don't know. Worldwide, people don't know what the difference between right and wrong is. I want you to hear that deeply and let it sink into your brain. Let it sink into your mind. That's the fundamental nature of the problem. Yet, in the anarchist community, how many people percentage-wise are saying this to people? How many people percentage-wise do you hear on a regular basis? They're talking about political machinations. They're talking about financial machinations. They're not talking about morality. I, I go through anarchist broadcasts endlessly. You don't even understand the amount of information that I take in from this community because I, I gauge all of consciousness and where it's at. I listen to things I don't agree with. I listen to things I do agree with. I listen to tons and tons of information from an unbelievably eclectic variety of human sources. And I'm telling you in the anarchist community, one of the last things I ever hear is people explaining morality, uh, explaining objective morality and telling people this is the most critical information. And unfortunately, it's one of the most occulted pieces of information that exists. I hear that almost never. I hear that on some people who are anarchists who are on the network that I created, that I specifically curate, but in the wider anarchist community, Morality is practically a non-spoken word, quite honestly. 
It hardly ever rolls off anybody's lips. I could listen to three hour podcasts endlessly all day long, 24 seven. I, I, I can loop them back to back. And I'm just telling you the word morality would barely ever slip the lips of one person. And that's why we're doing so poorly. That's why we're not attaining our goal. That's why I have to come on to a conference like this and report. You guys are not doing your job and this movement is going nowhere. The job that is being done is not good enough by any stretch of the human imagination. And we're going to get to what that job really needs to be. So as a result of this ignorance continuing unabated in the human community, most human beings are enacting and condoning behaviors that are completely out of alignment with natural law. What does that create? That creates slavery and chaos. We get what we give into the universe. We get back from the universe. It's a cosmic mirror of law. And this is what we got to wake up to. We have to wake up to the spiritual reality of how behavioral consequence works. The laws of behavioral consequence, the laws of cause and effect, the laws of karma, cosmic law, universal law, moral law. We have to wake up to how that law functions in our lives. And we we're, we're not awake to it as a community. If we were, we would be turning the situation around and we would be ending the, the condition of slavery. But we're no closer to doing that. Since natural law is the governing dynamic of human freedom. And that dynamic is based upon whether or not aggregate human behavior is in alignment to the objective moral right or not. It is a complete impossibility for human beings to attain a state of aggregate freedom while the bulk of the human population simultaneously remains willfully ignorant of objective morality and the workings of natural law. It's a mouthful, but that's the heart of the problem. That's the heart of the problem, folks. Natural law is the governing dynamic of human freedom based upon the moral quality of aggregate human behavior. If we don't even understand how natural law functions, we cannot, and we don't understand objective morality according to moral law in creation, we can never collectively align human behavior to the right behavior, to the moral right. It's not possible to do. So therefore, the state of freedom is impossible. And folks, if you're hearing, if you're hearing in your mind, Mark's talking about religion, you don't know what you're talking about and you're not listening properly. Your listening's off. I'm not talking about religion here. I'm talking about a hidden science that is actually the way the laws of the universe that we live in function that has nothing to do with religion. Le in 2019, my presentation was called Religion Versus Initiation, meaning staying where you're at in your thought process because of your nonsense religious beliefs versus progressing, initiating, starting the process of moving forward in consciousness and enacting the solution through true initiation into hidden knowledge. I said in that presentation that religion is the one and only problem that is preventing us religious in indoctrinated religious thought, dogmatic thought processes is what constitutes what I mean by religion. It doesn't have to be a cultural religion like Christianity or Judaism. It means it's a rigid thought process that doesn't have the correct answer or solution that you're vehemently clinging on to for, for dear life when it's not helping you move forward. That's what religion is as a thought process. This community is largely religious. Let me say that again. As, as much as I just told you, you're not very spiritual as a whole, as an aggregate. Okay. I'm not talking about painting with a broad brush and saying it's all people in this community, but they're not really understanding the true wideness of the cosmic moral law that we have to understand in order to solve the problem. They're still in a dearth of spirituality. And that doesn't mean that you're in any lack of religious thought. Okay. 
For those who can really hear what I'm saying, listen to what I'm talking about here. Just because the anarchist community has not attained to a, 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 a level of true spirituality and true spiritual awakenedness does not mean that they are not religious thinkers. This community is full of religious thinkers. And again, when I, when I say the word religion, if you're hearing Catholicism, Islam, Buddhism, you, you're not hearing what I'm saying. Rigid thoughts that cannot create the solution being clinged on to like, like it's, they're the most precious thing that, that you ever will have. And yet they're the things holding you back from enacting the real solution. But again, feel free to cling to your endlessly incorrect beliefs that have gotten you nowhere and continue to enjoy slavery and enjoy it when it comes for your children and your grandchildren. Because know ultimately that human thought is the only thing that is blocking freedom and making that horror the, the eventuality that is going to come to pass. Just know that in your resistance and ignorance. Here's the law of freedom right here. There's a law in the universe that governs freedom. This is it written out in English. And then I'm going to actually give you the scientific mathematical notation for it. For, for the left brain rigid skeptics, I'm going to actually give you the equation on it. And I am probably going to actually write a scientific paper on this, a short one that's going to present the thesis, give the equation, explain the equation. And I'm going to try to have it published. Because this is a science, it's not a religion or a belief system. And if you're still hearing that, you're not listening correctly. If you're hearing that this is some kind of a religious belief, you haven't been applying your attention to hear what's being said correctly using your own brain. So this is the heart of the problem. This is the law of freedom. This is what governs whether an entire civilization of beings are free or whether they are enslaved. The aggregate freedom of human beings is directly proportional to the aggregate morality of their behavior. Hear it and deeply understand it. If you gauge the freedom of an entire civilization of beings, a global civilization such as humanity, gauge their freedom, how would you do it? You have to add up all of their moral behavior and get an index for that. How much of this individual's behavior is moral versus immoral? How much do they actually understand objective morality? How much do they condone moral behavior and do not condone immoral behavior factually in nature, in reality? Not in some wild, wacky religious belief system, but in actual point of fact reality. Understanding the transgressions against natural law are murder, assault, rape, theft, trespass, coercion, and deception. Those are the real, quote, seven deadly sins. Those are the seven transgressions against natural law. How many people in the aggregate know what that really constitutes and know not to engage in it? Well, if they really knew it, they wouldn't advocate theft. Because every one of those behaviors is a form of theft, and they're advocating theft in the form of government, taking things from people that don't belong to them, funding other people that other people don't want to fund through violence, through co coercion, through duress. Taxation is just one simple thing that is a form of theft that breaks the, the natural law and is a transgression against natural law. And how many people condone it? They're bad people. That makes someone a bad person. If you go against the laws of morality, you are a bad person. And this is what people don't want to hear. How many people are actually bad people and consider themselves good people? See, there's like a moral Dunning-Kruger effect. Just like really ignorant people don't want to really, cannot really understand what a truly intelligent being is saying because they don't have the intellectual acumen to even process it. And then they think they're smarter than that person. They think they're smarter than someone who has figured out high systems level analytics and, and is giving an elegant, simple truth and solution to the matter, even in the form of an elegant and simple sentence and equation. But yet, yet the, the woefully ignorant will prove the Dunning-Kruger effect that they think they know better than someone who actually 
has dedicated their life to the arrival at the correct answer when they've done very little digging in that regard and they just have wildly off beliefs swimming around in their in their skull and yet they'll say no you're wrong and i know far better well no you are incorrect if you don't see the elegant truth in this and this is not my opinion this is not my imagining this is the truth of what dictates human freedom the end for all time Understand it or enjoy your slavery. Because people are hard headed, and I'm just going to say it the way that it is. If you don't start to understand this, you're creating your own slavery and you belong there because you're getting what you deserve for refusing to understand the real laws of morality. That's how it works. That's why we ain't making any progress. That's why we're still in slavery. Get over it. That's the correct answer. I'm correct. The, the goal is I have to get this information out to hard-headed people. And that's the problem. I'm not the problem. I'm trying to put forward the real solution to help hard-headed MFers that don't want to hear what the solution is. And I'm going to say it like that in simple, everyday street language if I have to. Because, I, again, I don't care who is offended. If you were doing this for the amount of time that I did and you had the level of knowledge that I do, you'd be pretty damn frustrated at the place of slavery we're still in in 2023. We could have solved this problem a long time ago if people would have listened and learned it for themselves. I'm not asking for followers. I'm presenting proofs. I'm presenting the actual observable phenomenon that is provable that you can go out and experiment with and prove it to yourself and no belief required. This is the law of freedom. The aggregate freedom of any human population of human beings is directly proportional to their aggregate moral behavior. Sum up all the individual's moral index of their behavior and you that is proportional to the aggregate freedom of that given society of, of human beings. And here's how you would write it in mathematical notation. Probably printed here for the first time in human history. This is it. There is a scientific mathematical formula that governs the freedom of any given set of beings. The sum of freedom is directly proportional to the sum of the behavioral moral index of every individual of a given population. That is it. Take a look at it. Take a picture. Memorize it. Okay? A paper will be forthcoming for the, the rigidly skeptical. Okay. I'll, I'll actually, I'm going to actually write a paper on this equation and what it really means. Break down every component, let people deeply understand it and go, go into the science of it. That is that there, there are experimentations that can be done. There is observation that can be done to prove it. It is not a belief system. I know the hard-headed will still insist that it is, but you're wrong. So that's number one. You have to have an accurate understanding of the problem. Number two, you have to know who the real enemy is. And it's not who most people believe that it is. Okay? Most people in this movement believe this is the enemy, unfortunately. We're still here, folks. Believe it or not, yes, not no. The answer is not no, no, no. People, yes. This is where we're at collectively. People actually still believe that these are the real masters of the universe, that they're the real problem, that somehow we got to go out and somehow change what they are doing. They believe that the real enemy are politicians and bankers. And I look, folks, I'm not talking about this from some secondhand knowledge. I am, I'm in the anarchist community. I, 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 I dwell among you. I, I lurk among you. I like to be a lurker and just hear things and just observe things. And I'm telling you, overwhelmingly, this is the worldview people subscribe to. The real problems are the politicians and the bankers, the international bankers, the politicians, even the deep state politicians that you can never vote out that are endless bureaucrats in the system. If you're still at this level of understanding, you know nothing. You don't understand how the world is structured. You don't understand the real power system. It's a child's view of the world. It's actually, it's not a child's view. You know what it is? It's a prepubescent teenager's view of reality. You may be a little bit beyond 
a, a simple little child, like in diapers, but you're not that far beyond them. Like you're, you're a prepubescent teenager that isn't, isn't even in puberty yet. You're certainly not a very advanced wise adult. Okay. It's, it's, it's somebody who has cracked open their eyes to such a sliver that you, 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 you still have eye gunk all in them from just waking up. It's, it's all blurry. Your, your eyelids, not even all the way open. That's the level of awakening that, that understanding that these people are a problem is too. That, that's what I would liken it to. Okay. Here's who the real enemy is. A, a person who really goes far forward and in a deeper progression into understanding that ignorance is the real problem. Well, gauge the people who are in the deepest level of ignorance, gauge the people who, and this could sound like an actual contradiction in terms, because I've told you that the people who are really the impediment to this are the dark occultists who are at a higher level of knowledge. Yes, that's true, but they're also the purveyors of the largest amount of ignorance through the institutions that they all ultimately control. So the real enemy is not these people, politicians and bankers. The real enemy are these people. Take a good look on the left-hand side, a representation of the actual sorcerers that run our world. I vehemently detest the term Illuminati and I don't use it in my work. This is what people have ascribed these, you know, ancient psychologists. They're ancient master level psychologists and people want to call them the enlightened. They're not enlightened about anything, you know. The, the term Illuminati in, in the Bavarian Illuminati occult order in the late 1700s was an extension, was a, a reworking of the name, the perfectibilis, which meant the perfect ones. And I guess they thought even humanity might think, wow, that's pretty arrogant of you to call yourself perfect. So they changed it to Illuminati, which meant enlightened ones. And they're not enlightened. Like I said, the people who understand what I'm talking about are the enlightened ones. The people who have come to the same conclusion because they've thought it through fully logically and understand it from a deep, not only scientific perspective, but from a deep spiritual perspective as well. They're the enlightened. They're the real Illuminati. I call these people the dark occultists. They're people who have ancient knowledge of how the human psyche works, all of its motivations, have a deep understanding about how it could be influenced, how it could be manipulated, how it could be controlled. And then they're using that knowledge in a very negative, evil way to manipulate and to control and to enslave. So I call them the dark occultists, or quite simply, they're the deceivers. If, if you're, you're, we're talking about ignorance as the ultimate enemy in the world. Conquering ignorance solves the problem. Conquering ignorance of objective morality and natural law solves the problem. These people are the ones who are putting out all the deception to try to get people to not look into that work. They don't even have to hide it. They're just putting so much disinformation out that people aren't looking at the true solution and understanding it. And so they're the deceived. So the real enemies are the people who are blocking the manifestation of the condition that we are saying that we want true freedom. These are the people who are ultimately blocking true freedom. Now are politicians and bankers not also doing that. Yeah, but they're tools. They're tools to that end. They're just order followers. The people who are really the ones that are doing it and are falling for it are who the real people we have to turn our attention toward. And I'm not saying try to convince the dark occultists who are the, the ultimate deceivers. We have to stop. We have to make pe help people to progress in consciousness to such an extent that they can no longer be deceived. So here's the real enemies folks, the deceivers and the deceived. This is where our attention has to be focused. Understanding what is the deception being pumped out by the deceivers and then going to the deceived and explaining to them how they've been duped, how they've been fooled, how they've been tricked, how they've been deceived. And they have to be 
constantly bombarded with the voice of truth. Just like the deceivers constantly bombard them with the voice of the lie. Just think about it from a purely logical perspective. Do the deceivers constantly bombard these people with the voice of the lie? If you say no, you're delusional. All day long, this is all that these people are hit by, is the deceivers' lies about everything. You name it, they're lying to them about it. Conversely, just consider how much a per percentage of the time are the deceived. Take a look at them in that image, hypnotized, brainwashed, asleep in, in the chair, sitting down on their asses, doing nothing except hearing more lies and deception. How, what is the percentage of the time during the course of the day where hardcore truth is hitting them? That where they're being bombarded by truth at the same level and at the same power that the deceivers are bombarding them with the lie all day. Once again, if I think you say it's even in the order of 5 to 10%, you're delusional and you're lying to yourself. If, it, if it's 1%, we're, we're lucky and we're in good shape. It's nowhere near that. Consider the course of any one of those hypnotized, delusional people's lives. What is the percentage of time they've been bombarded with lies versus the percentage of the time that anybody's hit them with any real truth? If you tell me it's 1%, I'd have to la laugh at you if I ever see you on the street. I'd, ha I'd have to stop you and go, hold on a second, let me laugh at you for about a half an hour to your face. If you tell me that that's 1% of their lives, give me a break. You're joking. You're fooling yourself. You're, you're chumped. Enjoy your go round with Chumpy the Hamster on the wheel because that's where you're going with that kind of a, an understanding or lack thereof, I should say. So then what is the answer? What is the actual dynamic that needs correction? We have to put into the world more truth than what the deceivers are putting out in the form of the lie. Are we anywhere near that? No. Is that achievable? Of course it's achievable. Of course it's achievable. We're just not anywhere close to doing it. You want to know what these people really are? Again, the dark occultists, the, the, the master deceivers are covert, hidden master psychological manipulators. You got to start thinking about these people. And again, I put the image there of the sorcerer behind the pyramid just to enact the, the, the dramatic sense of these people are wicked sorcerers. They're, they're not going to look like that in real life, folks. They're going to look like the well-dressed in a $10,000 Armani suit of a CEO running a company on, on the skyscraper at the, at, the, at the top floor of a skyscraper of his, of his corporate building. This is who these people are. They're, they're, they're not dressed in robes like this. Yeah, they do actually attend legitimate satanic rituals and, and, and organizations in which they may engage in behavior and enact rituals like that. But on an everyday basis, you, you'll walk by them and never know who they are. You know, a CEO businessman in an expensive suit you know, on, on the board of directors of, of a fortune 500 company is far more likely to be a Satanist than some imbecile teenagers going out into the woods, sacrificing animals. And this is what the population still doesn't understand about the world of the occult. They're entrenched in every worldly institution. They're pumping out their deception and their lies through every worldly institution. And just see the deceived as those who these Covert master psychological manipulators have manipulated with their lies and have negatively influenced them to make their behavior totally in opposition to natural law so that they remain enslaved. This is child's play for the deceivers because of the level of human psychology that they have at their disposal in their ranks, in their circles, in their groups, in their think tanks. It's one of the hardest things I've ever tried to get through to human beings is what is Satanism? What is the dark occult? What is the knowledge that they are hiding? Why is it important? We have to level the playing field through knowledge by dispelling ignorance and dispelling the lies that these, these deceivers have been putting out since humanity has existed. 
It's a worldview change, a paradigm shift that needs to take place. And we're not close to it. We're not even close to it because of the hard headedness of this community and the general sleeping masses as a whole. So before I tell you what the actual answer to human slavery is, to the the actual solution, we have to look at what is not the solution. These things in this section are not the solution to human slavery. And again, feelings are going to get hurt. Oh, well, tough shit. Feelings are going to get hurt. Okay? Stop reasoning with your feelings. That's the problem. Because I'm going to say something here that people are going to be like, oh, he's talking negatively against this and this is my whole life. Guess what? Get over it. If, if you let yourself reason with your emotions, oh well. You're not going to learn anything, not for real. Certainly not anything worthwhile long term to solve the problem. Everybody wants to look for these little short term solutions that they, oh we can learn this, we can, this can make, make a dent in the problem. And it's always a bandage on the symptom. It never tackles the causal factor. Ever. And here's just a few examples. There's an endless list here, by the way. I could go into probably 500 false solutions, but I'm going to give you three. And I'm going to tell you it is, first of all, the nature of the problem is not a political one. The nature of the problem is not a financial one. It's not political. It's not economic or financial. The nature of the problem is spiritual. So therefore, the solution can only be spiritual. And that is why these are not the solutions because they all deal in the 3D world that you can have every one of these alleged solutions in place and consciousness has not changed. Spirituality of the human being has not changed for the better in the aggregate. And that's why they're not solutions. They're short-term bandages that are put on a self-inflicted wound. So let's look at what are not solutions to the problem, not the solution to the problem of human slavery, because there is only one. Creating a new system of any kind, including a financial system. Cryptocurrency is wonderful. I have no problem with it. I'm not attacking, attacking crypto on its face. I am attacking the people who believe that it's just getting the right crypto created or just getting the right circumstances using a certain crypto in place as a system. And then everything's going to solve itself. This is delusion. This is wishful thinking. This is not understanding the causal nature of the problem. This is trying to put a bandaid on a 3d worldly situation. Is the existing financial system all screwed up? Of course, but that's just a symptom of the depravity within the human soul with the lack of morality within human beings in the aggregate. You're creating a new system. What do you think is going to happen? What do you think has happened past tense? Forget in the future, past tense. What? This community of crypto didn't degenerate into speculative markets just like the stock exchange and is run by vile, evil people and corporations. You believe that? You're not delusional enough that you don't think booms and busts in cycles within the crypto world aren't actually machinations by those same people, by those same immoral pieces of trash that create booms and busts in other financial sectors. Of course they are. You'd be an idiot not to see that. And again, I don't need technical explanations of crypto. I understand it quite well. I'm saying if you open up any new system to the same immoral people, it's going to get ruined in the same ways that every other system and institution that came before it gets ruined. Now, maybe there are some technological safeguards that won't make it be that much, much of a clusterfuck. Agreed. Probably better than government backed fiat currency, but we're not seeing any great grand moral influence in this community within the crypto space. Let's be honest. Let's, let's, talk about it plainly and honesty and honestly, you know, just because someone is using crypto doesn't mean that they're moral. And believe me, lots of people in the crypto community are immoral trash. You know, we got to 
do is look at what just went on with this big, you know, heist with F FTX. Forget it. You know, if that doesn't prove it to you, you're opening up this space. And if you're not changing consciousness and you're not changing morality, the same kind of shit will go on. It doesn't, a, a, a kindergarten, kindergarten child could figure this out logically. Yet this is where we're at. Crypto is going to be the big revolution. How about this one? This, this is one that I love. I love this one. I'm going to offend a lot of people with this one. And oh, well, here you go. It's just about creating new systems of growing and distributing food. Food is the answer, right? Permaculture is the answer. Different t forms of distribution of food, different planning methods, et cetera, so forth, on and on and on and on and on. It's about getting out into the wilderness. It's about getting out into the wild. Get into the most rural community where you can, where you can control a portion of the ground and grow your own food. Yeah. What about all the immoral people when shit hits the fan, they're going to just kill you and take whatever you just grew. Is that going to be a big problem solver then? How about when people who believe they have a right to just shut you down and take your land, like the government comes along and says, well, you're off of here and we're here now. We declared eminent domain for whatever reason, or we just don't like what you're doing. And we're going to say that you're criminals and we're putting you off your land. You're not solving anything. This is not a solution. Solution means to solve something. It comes from solvent, which means something that can dissolve something that is hard and crystallized. That's what the word comes from in science. For those who don't know, that's what the word solution means. Something that has been integrated through dissolving, you know, and th that's the problem is that we're not integrating what needs to be integrated into ourselves as far as the understanding of the causal factors and the teaching of that information. We think we can put the behavior first. We think we're going to come up with some new system, some new behavior or some new take on an existing system. And that's going to solve the problem. You're delusional. This is delusion. I want to say this plainly and clearly. Once again, this is delusional religious thought. This is delusional religious thought. This is delusional religious thought. Understand it deeply folks. Get as offended as you want. Turn it off. If you want, it's still true. What I'm saying is still true. How about this one? We're going to invent new technology. The, the solution's technological. Hey, I'm a big fan of technology. I like looking into the potential of free energy devices and generators, etc. Tesla, energy, etc. I mean, Nikola Tesla, not Tesla motors, you know, I like innovation. I like science. I like technology. I like learning technology. And guess what? There is a technological component to the solution. And we'll get to that later. But folks, if you believe some magical technology is going to come down the pike and solve the world's problems, you're out of your mind. It's equally delusional. This is putting the cart before the horse. All of these things are putting the cart before the horse. None of these things are the answer. The answer is not 3D. So it can't be food. Yes, you have to nourish the body. Yes, you want healthy uh, foods that don't degrade the mind and the body. Admit it. So these are, these are not in and of themselves bad things. Don't hear that. See, don't put words into my mouth. Hear what I'm saying and why I'm saying it. I'm not telling anybody, crush all forms of crypto, never look into Tesla, don't understand the nutrition and food and why organic food is important and why we should learn growing methods. I'm not saying that. I'm saying stop thinking that these are the ultimate solution. You're putting the cart before the horse. In any of these systems, they could be destroyed like that because we haven't taught morality to human beings first. Anybody could come along and destroy these systems before they're begun, while they're already begun, while they're starting to have impact at the drop of a hat, because they'll go and do immoral behaviors because instilling principles and morals didn't come first. See, that's why you have to have the solution in the correct order. There's a procedure, there's an order, there's a process to it. It's not just grab it out of thin air and it all comes together. There's a logical stepwise sequential process to the solution, which we will get to. 
But let's talk about these things that are not the solutions for a moment more. These false so-called solutions are all attempting to bandage humanity's self-inflicted wounds. It's a bandage on top of a symptom instead of getting to the causal factors. They attempt to bandage the self-inflicted wounds instead of first treating and healing the underlying moral and psychological causal factors and traumas that are leading people to remain ignorant of objective morality and natural law. You cannot leave that work on the back burner. Creating new solutions has to be pushed to the back burner. I'm not saying don't engage in it even simultaneously, but unless you have done the work and you have put out the truth of the matter regarding morality first, morality and principles have to come first. The bulk of your energy has to be in teaching morality, objective morality, principles, natural law, correct moral human behavior. If that's not our main focus, because first, first of all, folks, wh whose ultimate job is that? If you said parents, you are correct. Conscious parenting through teaching children these things to ingrain it into them when they are in the formative years of their life is what the job and the goal of any parent that brings a child into this world should be. But is that what parents have done? Not even close. Nowhere even close to that. Again, these false solutions are putting the cart before the horse. The majority of the anarchist movement is trapped in these false solutions. They erroneously believe that the solution lies in creating something new. Again, that's why I started with the slide, there's nothing new under the sun. The solution isn't new. The solution is the same thing it's ever been. It's the same thing it always will be. The solution to slavery is a proper understanding of objective morality and aligning one's behavior to it and then aligning the aggregate population's behavior to that objective mo morality, those objective moral laws. Nothing new needs to be invented. It's not about anything new that we can bring into creation. It is about ceasing and desisting in performing the behaviors which are violations of natural law which do initiate harm to other sentient beings. We must stop doing those things. The, the solution is not to create the new. The solution is to cease and desist, to stop doing behaviors that we, as humanity, are already doing, we're already enacting them, we're already condoning them. We have to stop doing those things first then we can have what we say we want. Then we can create the manifested condition of real human freedom. So any new system comes down the pike, such as a new system of organization, a new system of currency, a new system of growing food, distributing food, new technologies, new energy. You can go on and on and on and on and on. Every single one of them is not the solution. Every single one of them will, is always, always and forever doomed to fail in the long term. Let me say that again. Get as offended as you like. You're putting the cart before the horse. Every proposed solution is doomed to failure in the long term. Once again, I'm not saying that they're not admirable pursuits once we have the situation of morality in hand first. Then all of those things could quickly succeed, probably. But they will never succeed as long as the population remains immoral in the aggregate. So every one of those so-called solutions, which are not the one solution, will always be doomed to fail in the long term because what you have in effect done is you've put the cart before the horse and you're not going anywhere that way. See, in the trivium educational process, this is the equivalent of putting your rhetoric before your grammar. And specifically, you're putting your rhetoric before your grammar and logic. You need the grammar and logic in place first before you build your rhetoric. 
And again, this is why I want people to hear to say, you're not putting for you any solutions. No, everything I'm doing is the solution. Everything I've ever talked about is the solution. It's real world action to educate people and change their behavior widely and freely from a distance without even having to know them personally and speak to them in person. That's the ultimate rhetoric and the ultimate solution. But people don't even know how to do that. They don't know that it's the solution and they don't know how to do it. And when they're trying to enact these false solutions, they've put the rhetoric before the grammar and the logic. The trivium has to be in a specific stepwise progression and can never be taken out of order. It is grammar, the gathering of knowledge, gathering of all the seemingly disparate pieces of information that come from an eclectic variety of sources and constitute the nature of the problem and the solution is all in the grammar. Logic is weeding out inconsistencies in that data set, coming to an accurate understanding of what all that data means and an, an accurate understanding of how it can be employed. And then rhetoric is actually using that understanding that came through that knowledge to actually take right real world action. And if it is right action, that's what wisdom is. If it's not right action, it's folly. It's action taken that cannot contribute to the solution. And that's what the false solutions are. At this time in human history, without the proper grounding and foundational work of teaching human morality and natural law, every solution that is proposed or enacted without having that groundwork, that foundational groundwork paved first is folly. It is not truly action based in real wisdom. That's why teaching natural law, teaching objective morality is the solution and it's the only one. So seeking to create so-called new systems of human interaction without first seeking to help influence a change in human consciousness is the equivalent of taking the steps of the trivium education process out of order. Grammar, the gathering of knowledge and logic, a full understanding of that gathered knowledge must always come before rhetoric, which is action. And it's action that could be converted into wisdom if it is based in true moral rightness. So it's action with the potentiality for being wisdom. And again, look at it as a tree. The, you got to grow from the seed. The roots got to grow. The root system has to go in first. That has to grow, then become the, the trunk of the tree, and then eventually the branches, and then they bear fruit. They bear leaves and fruit. It's a very simple, logical progression. Understand the trivium, learn it, study it. I talked about it extensively, uh, you know, or introductorily, I really should say, in my last two Anarchy and the Occult presentations and extensively in my podcast series. So let's get to what the solution is. There's only one solution. It is not multiple. It is singular. Just like the truth is not multiple. Perception is multiple and fragmented. And it is our job as individuals within our species to align our perception to the truth. But the truth is singular. Just as the solution is singular. There is only one solution to the problem of human slavery. And here it is. This is it. First thing is we have to put first things first. So let's understand what the first thing in the solution is. The English word principle is derived from the Latin noun principia. Principia in Latin means first, chief, the most important. So principles are first things, literally translated out of the ancient Latin meaning first things. This is why this slide is called first things first. Put first things first. Put principles before action. Principles have to come first. Principles and the education of principles have to be the absolute first thing that we set forward to achieve of helping people to truly develop true principles, to understand first principles. That's where a proper moral understanding of anarchy and of the non-aggression principle comes in. They're the first things. They're first principles. So that's literally what it means. Principles, 
first things must be learned and made common sense knowledge first before any following actions can succeed in the long term. Unfortunately, very few people are involved in accomplishing that work first. Again, they want to move on to other forms of rhetoric before we have actually put the major condition in place that needs to be the foundational bedrock of the solution. Teaching moral principles. You have to develop those moral principles and you have to be stuck to them like glue first. If you don't do that, every endeavor that comes after it is doomed to failure in the long term. So put first things first and teach principles first, primarily first things. Then we won't have the problems in moral behavior that we already have. If that were done, if that were done by conscious parents, we wouldn't be in this mess. Unfortunately, most people's parents did not do that. So it is our responsibility to teach first principles. The next thing is the full understanding of objective morality and natural law. Learning natural law and objective morality must come first. This is how you instill principles. You understand what morality really is. And you instill the non-aggression principle of don't do the things that violate natural law to other people. So you don't start none and there won't be none. The, the whole human condition is just a reflective of our aggregate behavior. We richly deserve the human condition that we are in. The problem is anarchists still have not identified the underlying causes and they're not actively teaching what they are to others to learn, to help them to learn. They're still stuck on politics and money and the next Bitcoin and growing food. And I, I mean, I listened to like a five hour podcast with like 10 anarchists sitting there having a conversation. And I counted the word, the times the word morality was spoken and it was zero in five hours. And we think we're heading anywhere. We delusionally believe we're headed anywhere. It's chumpy running on the wheel endlessly going nowhere because they're chumped. And that's the sad fact of the, the matter that I have to report. I must report that. I don't want that to be the case. I want to win and be on the winning team. But I can't say that I am. We're the bad news bears playing the New York Yankees at the prime of their dynasty. And we're getting clubbed out is what's happening. We're getting chumped. Only after the knowledge of natural law is so deeply ingrained in humanity that it is considered by just about every human being living that this is purely common sense, that, that this is as self-evident as I go outside on a clear, cloudless day, the sky refracts blue light into my eyes. It, it, it should be that clear that common sense. What's that big light in the sky? Oh, that's the sun. Oh, that's common sense knowledge. This is how common sense natural law has to become. Only once we make it that common sense, can any system be implemented that will have a truly good effect in a lasting way in our world. Oh, you can have a very good short-term effect, but then eventually it's going to degrade. It's going to just totally crumble apart. Because of all the negative and moral influences coming forward and coming into play, bad actors coming in, government coming in, just people who are just going to spoil it because they're, they're rotten in their core of their soul and their spirituality. And until they're helped to change and to refine and to purify, forget it. They'll destroy and waste everything that they put their mind toward. This is simple, cosmic, universal moral law. That's all it is. And if you can't hear the simple elegance and logic in it, I honestly feel sorry for you at this point in time. The only solution is a spiritual solution. There is no political solution. There is no financial solution. There is no technological solution. There is no human organizational solution. There is a technological component to the real 
and only solution. But the first part of it has to be spiritual. And you have to respond to that spiritual call to true enlightenment and true awakening. And the first step is become enlightened and awakened yourself. And that means understand what's really going on. Understand the nature of our reality. Know what the human condition is, that it is slavery. Understand the moral truths about that. Understand that that is morally wrong and should never be justified and should never be tolerated. Understand that that situation has to be ended. We have to end that condition. We have to become truly free. We have to know natural law. We have to know objective morality. We have to instill that in our children. And that's the only way we're ever going to create and manifest the condition of true freedom. And then you got to teach that to other people publicly, not one or two people by word of mouth, publicly teach, become a public figure and teach all of the people who are lying to people on a daily basis for a paycheck are public figures, whether they're newspaper column writers, whether they're TV anchors, whether they're so-called journalists that are just prostitute media, it doesn't make a difference they're all in one form or another public people that are putting information out to other people that is deception, deception. It's deceptive in its nature and it is putting people off of what the solution is deliberately and willfully and or for a paycheck. We have to become the new truth telling community of people publicly. And again, I've been doing that for 16 years. What have the people who have only ever been watching for only a few years been doing? Hardly anything in contributing to that voice of truth. The goal is not to put your ass in a chair and learn from Mark Passio. The goal is to put your ass someplace where you're broadcasting out in front of thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people. Whether it's with your voice, whether it's through writing a book, whether it's through making a podcast, whether it's through... Uh, other creative endeavors such as music or art get involved in putting the great work once you know it out there into the world putting the objective morality once you know it again i'm not asking for morons to go out and spout whatever they want to spout whatever nonsensical ignorance that they want to spout just by becoming a content creator any fool can do that believe me there's plenty of fools like that already out there that are talking out their rear end, drools coming out their mouth, they're saying nothing of any significance or import, and they think they're somehow contributing. I'm not asking for more of those people. We have far more, far too many of those people already. This is why people want to put words in my mouth before they really hear what I'm saying. They formulate in their mind an idea of what they think I'm saying, but they really don't have it correct. Because I hear this constantly. You want just the average Joe Schmo to go out and become a content creator? Did I? Where have I ever said that? Uh, that's a moron that's listening. That, that you, you, there's, there's mental limitations somewhere if that's what you've heard. You're, you're not a good listener. You're not an accurate listener. You're a poor listener and a poor learner if that's what you're hearing. I'm telling you, get enlightened first. Get all the way enlightened first. Really understand the, the causal factors that are the dynamics driving the, the, the whole situation of human enslavement. Understand that, that that is a moral and spiritual problem first, and then become a public figure and teach that as widely and as freely as you can. And there's where the technological component comes in. Because we're given this awesome gift of a medium of information conveyance and transference we can reach other people's minds and hearts remotely that's magic that is literal occult magic that is the magic that was once hit in science that humanity eventually learned how to do convey ideas at a distance and who's been using it to its great effectiveness the dark occultists the manipulators, the deceivers of our world, they're hiring people every single day to lie to the masses and deceive the masses more and more and more, put them more in a state of thrall, in a trance, in a satanic, tranced out mindset, where no part of their mindset resembles how the, the, uh, the reality we are living in actually functions. But those dark occultists, they're using, utilizing that technology very effectively.
We need to be the opposite of them. Instead of deceivers, we need to be people who clear up that deception in the body, the bulk of the human population, and help them to understand and to receive truth, and then pay the favor forward for others. So that it's everybody teach more people until everybody has common sense knowledge of what the real answer is. See, we have to end modern human illiteracy to end slavery. And people will see that headline and be like, what are you talking about? Almost everybody's literate. No, you're incorrect about that. Almost everybody in the world is illiterate. Let me say that again. Almost every human being on this planet is illiterate because the definition of literacy has shifted. The definition of simple literacy in the past was you know how to read and you know how to write in whatever cultural language you were raised in. You can read that language, you could write that language, and therefore you're considered literate. If you are using that same ancient definition by today's standards of what literacy means in the modern world, once again, I kind of feel sorry for you. I kind of feel sorry that your, your brain doesn't work in a logical capacity enough to understand that that's a completely outdated idea of what literacy means. And yes, you could say that's the hardcore staunch definition of literacy, but the question becomes how many people use pen and paper and are only concerned about whether you can read characters and write characters. Do you believe that's the way you communicate in the modern world? Because if you do, I think you're on some really bad drugs, you know? And, you know, I, I just got to say it to people like that because I'm always astounded that they can't figure this out on their own. I'm, I'm, I'm astounded by it. And that's because the Dunning-Kruger effect works the opposite way. When somebody is more hyper-intelligent than other people from a, a purely intellectual point of view, it can be very difficult for them to accept the fact that other people just, they're not quick on the uptake. They're just slow, you know? And they don't get things. They don't see things. Like, I don't want to believe that I can see far, farther and faster than other people. I want to kind of attribute, if we all have the same information, we'll all basically get there in a relatively short order of time. And it's not going to take decades and decades and lifetimes and lifetimes and lifetimes. It shouldn't have to. We have the medium at our disposal to make it happen in a human lifetime. And we're squandering that, sadly. Modern literacy means that you understand how to communicate and publish using modern media. Older media that is not really used anymore to do that is pen and paper. Who's communicating with pen and paper these days? Show me them. Find them for me. And again, I'll sit there for about a half an hour and I'll laugh at them for a half an hour. You know, because if people are still doing things that way, generally they're an old ignorant fart. And it's sad to just come out and say it like that. But look, they're, they're not going to be involved in the solution. They're probably going to die in their ignorance. They want it to be like that because of their laziness. Where they could learn it, they could apply their potential and learn it. It might be a little bit more difficult for them than for younger people. Who knows? But I see 95-year-old people making an effort, using computers, learning, trying to communicate what they know. As a matter of fact, the older community should be wise enough to understand that they should be learning this stuff. Because if they have wisdom in their years, they should be wanting to communicate that wisdom out to others. They shouldn't be shirking technology as the mechanism and the medium for doing that. So to all the older people in the audience saying, I'm too old for that. No, you're not. That's a mindset. And that's you wanting to remain lazy so that you shirk your moral responsibility for communicating the truth to others. And you don't want to hear that, but guess what? It's damn true nonetheless. So once again, get all, you know, get your panties all in a bunch because of it. Do whatever you want, but it's still, what I'm saying is still true. And if you have any discernment, I, I tell people, absolutely ask for the gift of discernment in your life. Then you'll hear the truth of what I'm saying. You won't be angry about what I'm saying. You'll say, oh my God, this has been the truth all, all along. And you'll want to become part of the solution instead of remaining 
silent, which makes you part of the problem. The sad fact of the matter is most of humanity is illiterate by modern standards of literacy. Most human beings have still not understood the inseparable role that techno technological literacy has with human freedom. They cannot be separated. And that, that doesn't mean that the answer is technological. The solution is not technological. The solution is spiritual, but we will be able to communicate it widely and freely through technological means if we learn how to employ them. Sadly, most human beings on earth are not literate in modern communications and publishing technology. Many are simply too lazy to learn and employ it. This is why the truth is not reaching enough people. I'm going to say this again. Listen, get all the chabbering gibberish voices and pull them out. However, you got to do it. Listen to the statement. Almost everybody by modern standards is illiterate when it comes to publishing and communicating widely out to everybody in the world through the internet. The, the great opportunity is the piece of technology that we collectively call the internet. That's how we're going to reach minds. That's how we're going to help to unlock souls. If you haven't understood the, the solution is spiritual and the solution will be conveyed through modern technological media. It doesn't mean the answer or the solution is technology. Technology is a tool for getting the solution, which is spiritual out to people. So listen, most people are too lazy to learn how to use the mechanism, the technological mechanism for the deployment of the solution. That's why we're not reaching enough people. That's the reason the truth isn't getting it out to enough people is enough people haven't learned it and enough people haven't spoken it to others. How do you expect the truth to propagate magically? You know, a, a big hand is going to come out from the clouds. It's going to talk. It's going to give everybody a boop on the nose. Boop, 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 boop. Oh, you're magically enlightened. You, you, you know, morality, you, you know, the government slavery and tyranny. Yeah. You're waiting for you're waiting for the magical finger out of the sky to boop everybody on the nose. Again, it's a, it's a delusional child's mentality about how things really work in nature. So ask a logical question to logically get to the understanding of the solution. If you asked a big portion of, of, of a population of a city to consider themselves to be awake. You take everybody in a whole geographical region that says, yes, I'm awake. I'm spiritually awakened. I'm spiritually aware. And I know what's going on on this planet. And I, I want to be actively involved in my contribution, putting my effort, my contribution toward the solution. I don't want to be part of the problem. And you ask them, how did you come to that change in consciousness? How did your consciousness change like that? That you think like that? Did you always think like that? Or, or were you in some other kind of a degraded consciousness mindset where you didn't understand any of this stuff? You bought into all the deception, you bought into all the lies, and then that changed over time. How did it change? What did you do to make that consciousness change? And you know what? Almost all of them, with very few exceptions, not going to give a 100% blanket statement, but probably in... 95 to 97, 98% ratio. Almost everybody's going to give you this answer. They're going to say that they woke up, even if they're only somewhat awake, they awaken from researching on digital media, whether it be websites or reading digital books or watching digital videos or listening to digital audio. They woke up from researching on the internet using the internet as the medium of information transference from the teachers who learned the knowledge, encapsulated it and formalized the knowledge in the form of some form of digital media, uploaded that to the internet so it could reach these people's eyes and ears. And that's how our willpower has to be employed to teach others the truth. If it weren't for the people whose great labor of love was to put their voice out onto the internet and to put their teachings out onto the internet, I may have never woken up out of my trance. Look, 
admittedly being in rituals with people who like ran the financial system and ran the just the so-called justice system where judges and lawyers and bankers and politicians and chiefs of police and military people, you name it. That helped wake me up. I saw the handwriting on the wall pretty quickly that these people aren't messing around, that they're in control, that they're the ones who run the institutions, that they're in the positions of power in those institutions. And that's what helped me wake up and get out and not commit my soul to that evil and darkness. Thankfully, thank God, because my life could have went drastically in a very different direction in a short order of time. But fortunately, Providence smiled upon me because I made the correct decision to not continue my involvement. And at that level, my involvement was admittedly so low in those hierarchies and structures of power that they just said, goodbye, boy, out you go, do your worst. We don't care about you. They care about people who know where the bodies are buried. Then you're not leaving so easily. But in my case, thankfully, I did not commit to that level and I was able, I was allowed, quite frankly, to leave and not come back. The problem is other people who claim that they know, regardless of what experience brought them to that conclusion, are sadly not putting that information back out there for, to others. And people go, oh, we got enough information. We're, we're drowning in information. No, we're not. We're drowning in the wrong information. The true information is paltry. Because how many people will hear anything else like this? I, I, don't, I don't need to bet you. I don't need to bet you a dollar from my wallet. I don't need to bet you uh, a Satoshi from my crypto wallet. I know the case is nobody else except me is talking about this stuff. There are other teachers out there. Good luck finding them in this community, in, in, the, in what I'm calling the general anarchist community. Not to say it's all bad people. It is not. Many, many good people in this community. I don't want you to think I'm just trashing you. I am, however, telling you that your effort to this point has been negligently bad. Negligently bad. And it's got to turn around and I don't know how much more I'm just going to beat the dead horse and uh, keep saying the same thing over and over to the same people. I might try to expand my horizons and try to speak truth to more, um, willfully, um, re re receptive people because I can't just say the same thing over and over like a broken record to the same people. So if I see progress picking up in this particular community, I'll probably do more presentations, but if I don't see progress, this is probably going to be the last type of presentation like this that I do for this community. I'll still do other presentations, but I don't know whether I'm going to speak at anarchist events. Let's put it that way. A anyway, um, almost everybody's going to tell you this is how they woke up if they're, they're honest with you and if they're being honest with themselves. So we have to develop the will to teach others, and that's what's going to help them to awaken out of their slumber. So how close are we to achieving this goal? And again, that's what I'm harping on in the anarchist community. We're light years away from it. How many people would you ask? Just ask the simple question again. Bring it back to simple logic and ask yourself the simple question. How many people do you yourself estimate, if you had to guess a percentage, in the whole human population are both enlightened regarding objective morality and natural law? They fully understand the laws of morality and which behaviors are in alignment with morality because they do not initiate harm against other sentient beings and which behaviors are out of alignment with the laws of morality because they do initiate uh, the <clears throat> initiation of harm and coercion against other sentient beings. And simultaneously to that, and they know how to publish information digital information in the modern world in the form of websites, digital videos, digital audio, digital books, and other forms of digital media. How many people percentage-wise in the whole world are both enlightened when it comes to morality and natural law and have the technological skill sets to reach out to others in a formalized, logical way on the internet 
widely and freely to teach the human population those truths. If you say that it's even approaching 1% of people, once again, I feel sorry for your powers of logic, for your powers of deduction, for your, the clearness of your vision. Uh, my heart breaks and aches that you see things so clouded that you cannot see things more clearly than that. Because if you don't understand that these are what our work is to do, these are the things we must do and accomplish. We must communicate the knowledge of objective morality and natural law to the whole human population. And the only way that that will be accomplished is if we it completely take over the distribution of media such that our voice becomes so strong, powerful, and omnipresent that no one can escape the message. That it is an impossibility to escape the message and not be indoctrinated into it, but look into it for oneself because they now have the required information and they can come to the same logical conclusions. See, what the dark side is doing is not that. They're trying to directly inculcate and indoctrinate people into a, a lie and a deception. And because people are so weak spiritually, they've fallen for that. It's our goal to build them up, to help them to become autodidactic learners, to help them to become to, uh, a person who has discernment and can, who can exercise that discernment in what they read, in what they, the information that they gather, so that their consciousness is high enough that they cannot be deceived. We have to teach them how to learn. And we're nowhere near that. We're nowhere near that goal. We're light years away from that goal, sadly. And again, I'm not saying that to discourage people, to berate you, to, to beat you up. I'm trying to help you to understand where your work is. That's it. Enacting the solution, or in other words, doing the one great work. Why have I always referred to it as the one great work? It's not two great works. It's not three. It's not five. It's not a thousand. It's one. It doesn't matter how many people ever exist on this planet. There's one great work to enlighten oneself and then to help other people to enlighten themselves. That's the one great work. That's what's going to end human slavery, to communicate the knowledge of objective morality and the laws, the moral laws of nature to other people. That is the one great work. And to do it widely and freely is to do it through a technological means to get it out there onto the internet freely for people to take into themselves. And that's what's going to help them transform their consciousness. There is a technological component, but it's not a technological solution. The, the solution is in the information and that is spiritual in its nature. Then we're going to utilize the tool of technology to get that knowledge out there to everybody. The one great work of ending human slavery will never be accomplished until the knowledge of objective morality and natural law is learned first and then published and communicated through modern forms of media, widely and freely de-occulted for all to see, to hear, and to learn. That is the only solution to human slavery, ladies and gentlemen. And I really, really hope that you want to see the current human condition of manipulation and slavery completely destroyed as I do. I want to see this dark world, this dark future, this dark seeming eventuality that we're racing toward defeated. I want to see it destroyed. I want to see it completely exploded into a billion pieces. I want to see a new world emerge that is based on the respect for natural rights, that is based on true freedom, that is based on dispelling human ignorance about morality and natural law. And that world will be a world of endless possibility. That world will be a world of true anarchy, true freedom, and true love. So ladies and gentlemen, Thank you for your kind attention in this presentation, and I'll see you really soon.